Good night, everyone. This is Sharissa Monroe, and I am again honored and privileged and blessed to be joining you here at A Night with the King. Pastor Angela, Pastor Pepe, thank you so much again for the opportunity and you trusting me to share your stage and share your platform and share your community to be able to share what God has for the people to hear. And in the next few minutes, I just want to share a word of encouragement, especially to the women out there during these hard times, these rough times, these time of crises. I know things seem very gloomy. It's been one thing after the next that we've been dealing with, but if nothing else, I want to be that small element of hope and uh, life that you may not be feeling at this time. And I remember being in a similar situation a few years ago when I say that because I had a very interesting, very short conversation with a coworker of mine a couple of days ago. And she said to me, we were talking about all the things happening in 2020 from the beginning of COVID and COVID-19 in, in February and then to the racial unrest, um, the injustice that has occurred because of these deaths lately that we've been having. And, you know, she, her, her exact expression was, man, 2020 has been a year. If I can go back all over again, I'll, you know, I'll start it differently. And how 2020 has just started and it just started out the way that it did. And it's just been horrific. And I, and I, looked, I looked at her and I called her by her name and I said, Karen, I said, when you have gone through what I went through four, five, six years ago, that makes 2020 like nothing, like a piece of cake. And she looked at me and she said, because she remembered what happened in my life. And she said, Charissa, you are very right. She said, you are right. It's all about perspective. And instantly she realized that when you have gone through the tragic experience of losing your parents suddenly, two people that you are, you are extremely close with and you lose them suddenly with no warning and having to go from what life was and what it was supposed to be in that normalcy to now having to live without them and move on and what that looks like. She realized that I have life. I haven't lost another soul. It 2020 may not be affecting you the way it's affecting others. And I said to her, I said, you are correct. I, so in thinking of what I wanted to encourage you with today it, it stemmed from that because I went through my season of what I'm going to talk about tonight and that's my season of desert or wilderness and I think that if you if, if I want to kind of compare and sum up what we're in right now I think we're in this season of, 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 of desert living where everything just looks dry everything just looks the extreme either the extreme heat or extreme cold like when you think of the desert you think about very little positives um you think about the loneliness the extreme darkness versus the extreme light um one minute the, during the day it's really 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 hot and during the day it's the, the night is cold or vice versa and, the, and and their extreme heats there were their extreme temperatures um, everything is barren. There's very little growth. And the things that grow there tend to be a little dangerous. There's no shade. There's lacking everything. We're lacking water. We're lacking food. We're lacking resources. It's just desert just equals lack. And I feel like from January, February 2020 to now, for most people, that's where they're at. But they're in this season of the desert. And I want you to focus on the fact that I said they're in a season of desert living because seasons, that's, that word season means that it's going to change, but it doesn't make the season that we're in now any, doesn't make it any less dangerous, any less volatile, any less uh, hurt, any less, uh, f uh, f this, this feeling of, of intent, of failure, this feeling of, man, we have totally lost control. And I've had my season of that. I was telling her, man, I've been through my season of desert. I've been through my season of pain and loss and grief and sadness. And some of that I'm still going through, but I'm definitely on the up end of that. I've, I've been through my season of just feeling hopeless and just it being really tough and sorrowful. And the good part about all of that is there is a preparation number one there's a preparation that occurs in your season of 
desert, in your season of wilderness. And I think I can speak the way I can speak and I can think the way I think in 2020 because in 2014 and 2015, I went through a season of desert and a season of wilderness that has literally prepared me to be able to not only manage 2020, but be able to help someone else. And that's going to be number two, all wrapped up into one. Like the desert allows you to prepare yourself for what's coming next, which can definitely be a season that's actually worse than that. And then also allows you to be to to go through something, experience something to be able to help somebody else. So I've been able to encourage people. I've been able to uplift and empower. So you look at this time and you and you're probably thinking, man, what is um, what is it I'm going through? I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. God, why are you allowing this to happen to me? Why are you allowing this to happen to the world? Why are you allowing this to happen to us? Well, I in that moment of desert, you're not thinking about it then, but you're being trained for something. You're being prepared for something. I was talking to my fiance just a little while ago, and we were having a discussion about the training that he went through as a Marine. And they took them through the desert and they had to live, they had to actually go through the desert for days and days and days and weeks and actually live through it because during war, there's a certain level of I'm going to use the word obstacles and challenges that the desert brings that are going to be the same obstacle and challenges that we're going to face when we're actually going through a real war, when we're going through a real spiritual warfare or a fight or a season in life where there it feels like I'm just in the middle of one big war. And you're not going to have time to think about a particular barrier or a particular crisis or a particular challenge or a particular obstacle obstacle that comes up. You just know that you have to get to a certain goal. And when those obstacles are there, you're going to be able to jump over that. You're going to be able to bypass that. You're going to be able to brush that aside. Why? Because you went through a training season. You went through a season of the wilderness where you went through that. You jumped through that hurdle, you saw that hurdle for the first time, you saw that obstacle, you ran through that. So when it actually happens when you're in that season, you're able to just bypass that and get to where you're going. You're able to just brush that aside and get to where you're going. Why? Because you've been trained for that. You've been prepared for that. So go through this time. This is one of those things where, and I know people probably hear us, at the tide of hearing us say, go through the process. Endure the process. Let the process happen. It's because that process is so important and vital for preparing you to where you need to get to and preparing you to what you need to get through so that you can get through it to prepare you for number one, the next season of the wilderness is going to come up, but also number two, you're able to help someone. Another thing, number three, that I learned in my place and space of desert was it was a place and a time for me to get closer to God. Why? Because there wasn't anything else for me to depend on. There wasn't anyone else for me to depend on. My parents were no longer there. My dad's coattail was no longer there for me to grab. Their back was no longer there for me to kneel on. Their shoulders was no longer there for me to stand on. Their joy, their love, their nothing was no longer there. And so I had to get to a place where now I can only trust God. Now I can only believe in God. Now I can only know that he's going to provide for my needs. He's going to fill this void. So I think we're in this stretch and this space of desert or lacking or without because he's wanting to draw us closer to him. He's wanting to draw us and bring us near to where he is and where he wants us to be. When I think about the social unrest and the political unrest and the injustices that we are going through it's almost as though we're going through this wilderness where everything just seems completely out of control um when i think about the social distancing that we have had to go through or had to partake in because of covid nothing is in our control um we're stuck in a place where we are lonely we're stuck in places where we don't want to be we're stuck in this dry dry place and we're thinking man what are we going to do how am i going to get how am i going to get through and how am i going to be able to deal with this and god is saying this is the time when you can no longer depend on yourselves 
you can no longer depend on each other. You can no longer look at the government. You can no longer look elsewhere. Like you can only look up. You can only look to me. We have been depending on so much for so long. And he is saying, I need to strip you of everything. I need to strip you personally. I need to strip you as a community. I need to strip you as a nation. I need to strip you as a world. I need to strip you of everything. So for once, everything that you've been trying to take out of me, you've been trying to take prayer, you out, you, they've been trying to take the word God out. They have been trying to just build their own religions. And he is saying, no, this is the time for you to only be able to turn to me. In my season of desert, I had to only turn to him for strength. I had to turn to only God for guidance. I had to turn to him and say, God, I don't know how I'm going to live without. I don't know how am I going to live without. And that's when he said to me, you have me. You have every breath in your breath that you are breathing. You have me. Your parents are not more important than me. Your relationship with them is not more important than me. Their life is not more important than me. Your plans with them are not more important than me. And as much as that was hard to accept, the moment I did, the more joy I felt. Now, I'm not going to say that the grief and the loss and the pain and the hopelessness and the sorrow and the sadness that you feel in your season of desert, whatever that looks like for whatever reason, that doesn't go away. That exists completely. Why? Because we are human. So I feel all of my feelings. I feel all of my pain. I, pain. I feel all of my grief. You are going to feel all of your trauma. You are going to feel all of your hurt. You are going to feel all of your faint, pain. Please feel them. But also, don't get stuck. There's this place of don't get stuck. You know, when I think about a desert, you'll be walking in a desert and it'll just be dry, just rocks and dry and rocks and dry. And then all of a sudden you will get past a little, would look like weed or would look like a sprout or would look like a little shrub. The fact that there is a shrub means that deep down, I don't care how deep you got to go, but that means deep down somewhere there is some stream or some level or some just enough water somewhere to allow that to grow. And that is God's way of showing us that there's going to be just a little bit of me in your desert. There's going to be a little bit of me in your desert to go to the next day, to get through the next hour. And literally, I felt my hurt and I felt my pain. But I also remember that, you know what, Sharissa, the reason why you are still living to this day is because your life is not finished. Your purpose is not finished. Therefore, there's so much work that you have to do. And that gave me life. That purpose gave me life. It gave me joy. Didn't take away my sadness. Didn't take away my pain. But it took away my hopelessness. It allowed me to, to recognize that on the other side of this, you're going to stand. On the other side of this, you're going to be strong. And on the, on the other side of this crisis, of this season, there's going to be a blooming season that you're going to be in that's going to be able to encourage others and be a testimony to others who are now in their season of wilderness. We're all going to be in these different seasons of change at different times. Like my wilderness may have been 2014 and your wilderness may be now. And I'm, I don't look at this as a wilderness for me, but I remember when I was there. I remember when I was right where you are, just wondering and hopeless and just being like, Lord, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. And he reminds me over and over and over again. He said, no. He said, you need to remember that I am the only one that can buy for you, provide for you. I am your number one source. And it's difficult for me to not be able to I look at me in the natural as a human being, but I also look at me as a spirit being as well. And I, and that's why I say, have all your feelings. Recognize them. Recognize your anger. Recognize your hurt. Recognize your grief. Recognize that you're in a season of wilderness. Recognize that you're lacking. Recognize that you have no control. But also recognize that I can't get stuck here. God, there's just a little bit of him to allow you to go to the next level. There's a little bit of him 
to allow you to move on. There's a little bit of him that's preparing you for when you come around to what you think is going to be a season of wilderness again. No, that's actually going to be your, your season to be able to help another life, to be able to change another life, to be able to empower another life. And I'm able to stand here in 2020 with all that we have going on, being able to see what I see on the TV, what I hear in the news, the conversations I have with people. And I'm able to experience all of that and still be able to provide some level of rational thinking or rational discussion and still be able to smile. You know, I had a friend and she said to me, you know, how are you? I know that you're going through, I know everyone is in this emotional uproar right now and everyone is going through and I'm, and in my, I'm, I'm empathetic, so I'm careful what I say, but in my mind, I'm thinking, no, I'm not emotionally going through this. I think I'm empathizing with everybody else who I realize, I think more of what I'm feeling is the loss. Like in that season of wilderness, there's this feeling of loss. And I think there's a loss that I'm feeling because I'm recognizing it. But I also know that this feeling that this season that we are in is God is saying you need to one, I'm preparing you and I'm training and two, you need to depend on me. You need to turn every part of you to me. Let me provide. Let me be the vengeance. Let me fight for you. Let me restore you. Let me renew you. Let me, let me, let me. But no, we always, we are believing that I got control and I can do this and I can do this. And he's saying no. Um, and so I want to encourage you to go through this wilderness process, go through this process of anger and this process of hurt and this process of I can't deal with this and this process, like go through that. This is character building for the next season. This is him preparing you for what he has coming or for what is coming. Because there's some things that God doesn't necessarily offer but he allows. So he may not authorize COVID. He may not be the author of what we're going through, but he may allow us to go through it because it is that season of testing, because it is that, it is that season of training and it is that season of preparation for us to be able to go through all the other seasons that we are going to go through. And if it doesn't break us, if we're able to get through and get on the other end, then we're going to be stronger than we were going into it. I was much stronger on the other side of 2014, 2015 than I was going into it. And I thought I was a strong puppy. I thought I was a strong puppy, be puppy before I lost my parents on November 9, 2014. And then for that split moment in that season of wilderness, I actually realized my weakness. So one thing that you are gonna realize in your in the season of of, of the desert is your your moments and your areas of weaknesses. And then you're able to say, okay, so I'm naturally not as strong as I thought. Then you're able to work on that. You're able to build that. You're able to get stronger in that. When you come on the other side of that, you are a much stronger person. I think about my aunt who lost her husband on that plane crash as well. Who's my aunt? I've, who's my uncle? I've watched my aunt go from a very strong woman to for a split second, I've watched my aunt just cry and cry and cry and cry and just hurt and pain. And I look at the woman that I see five years later and she is literally this pillar of strength for myself, for my brother, for my cousins and so many other men and women. Like we look at her for strength. We look at her for that joy. Like if she's happy and if she's smiling and she's standing and I've been able to see her grow. I've been able to see her grow in character. I've been able to see her grow in her faith. I've been able to see her grow in her strength. Like she has been the testimony to me. Why? She's been a level of encouragement to me. Why? Because she's gone through her season of wilderness and now she's able to help me. She's able to help so many other pastors' wives. That is what we are here for. We are not here for ourselves. We, I'm not here to go through my seasons and then enjoy my life by myself. No, as kingdom citizens, as, as a people, as a human beings created in God's image and likeness with a purpose, for a purpose, we are here for people. We are here for each other. We are not here for ourselves. 
I'm not here to help myself. I'm here to allow God to use me, to break me, to remake me, to make me strong enough so that I can be a testimony and a witness to someone else. But he knows that I can't be a witness if I'm weak. I can't be a witness if I'm dead. I can only be a witness if I'm alive. I can only be a witness if I'm well. I can only be a witness if I've won. Let's say, guess what? I've been where you've been through. I've been where you've been. I've been what you've been through. I don't look like what I've been through. Because I've gone through seasons, I've gone through process, I've gone through change. And now here I am standing firm and I'm able to say that might look like that. You may be feeling the way you're feeling and that's okay. I'm going to allow you five days. I'm going to allow you a year. I'm going to allow you five years. Take as long as you need to go through. But at the end of that, we, we are going to get through this because at the end of that, there's work to be done. At the end of that, there's someone else's life. You are going to change. I was, again, doing some research on desert and Death Valley. I think it's a valley in California. And in 2016, a phenomenon happened again to it. Where, if you ever saw photos of Death Valley, it's very dry. Actually, it's very dry with very little blossoms of anything it's, it's a, the ground is broken it's unleveled it's just hot it's, or it could just be cold depending on the, the the season and the temperature and, and but in 2016 it had been years about 15 years when they had this what they call a super bloom where the valley just went from dry 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 and then they had this excessive amount of rain it was just rain and it was rain well this rain did something to the 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 soil to the earth of that valley whereas there was parts of the valley that literally blossomed not just here and there not as one flower no it blossomed into just wild flower just across the valley beautiful beautiful when you get a moment take a look at the picture and it, it, it's an unexpected bloom because you don't think about these things happening in the valley and i looked at that as you know, one of the rangers, they had asked him about the valley and his exact words were, there are so many seeds out there just waiting to sprout, just waiting to grow. When you get the perfect conditions, the perfect storm, so to speak, those seeds could all sprout at once. The fact that he even talked about seeds, that means that even a valley, even a desert, even a wilderness has seeds in it. Anytime you think about seeds, you automatically think of the two things. You think of life and you think of potential. I think of life and potential. Wherever there's life, whenever there's potential, I don't care how long it's going to take, that life of potential can never be destroyed. You can destroy potential, like you can destroy a seed, you can destroy the life that's there. It just is waiting for the right time, it's waiting for the right place, it's waiting for the right ingredients, it's waiting for the perfect conditions, the perfect storm, so to speak, in order for it to grow. So imagine you're already in a wilderness, a wilderness lacking all the things we need to live for life, and then it's saying, now you need to tell me I need a perfect storm. Is there such thing as a perfect storm? So a storm needs to come through. Like that process that I'm talking about, sometimes we have to go through the storm. We have to go through the desert. We have to go through the fire to come out of that, to be able to strengthen our weaknesses, strengthen our character, strengthen our strengths so that we can be effective in a blooming world, so that we can be effective in another person's desert, so that we can be effective as kingdom citizens, period. But if we're weak, if we're broken, if we haven't been tested, if we haven't been tried, if we haven't been processed, if we haven't been trained, if we haven't been prepared, then under no circumstances can God use us. But all of those can only happen if we have gone through. We've gone through the desert, we've gone through the rain, we've gone through the storm, we've gone through the fire. So this moment, this season that the entire world is going through, we need to embrace it. We need to figure out, okay, so what change is going to happen? We need to figure out where are we weak? What, what, what is God trying to say to us? Turn to him. Okay, God, we need you. We need your 
innovation. We need your interaction, your engagement. Like you need full authority. How do you want to use us? It's no longer up to us. It's no longer in our control. I was reading Isaiah 35, verse 1 to 2. And it says, The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. This is what Isaiah is saying about the desert. Like when I think about the Israelites and them going through what should have only been a year. They should have only gone through the desert for a year. But they complained and they griped and they fret and they turned away from God. And he made that one year into 40 years. And that's sometimes what we happen. Like right now, there's all of that going on. There's the looting and the rioting and the complaining and the anger and the grief. Like there's all this going on. And God is just say, I just need y'all to relax. I just need y'all to let me, let my will, like a lot. But he has to allow it. Why? Because there's some shedding and there's some strongholds and there are some breaks that he need to happen. And he needs to use us to restore. Like these things need to happen anyway. But God needs a, a citizen, a community of citizens that's ready and prepared to restore when we're done, when this is finished, to renew when this is finished. And that has to be me and you. I've gone through, I mean, I'm telling you, I've gone through a season of just brokenness that when he patched me together, Again, when he has been, because there's still been this process of me strengthening, but those scar tissues are now so tough that I know exactly who is my source. I know who is my provider. I know who is my sustainer. I can only put my faith in him. I can't put my faith in man. We see what man gets us. I can't put my faith in any leader. We see get where that gets us. I can't even put my faith in pastors because they waver. But when you have gone through something yourself, you can stand and say, I have seen what the goodness of God has done for me. I can only rejoice in this time. I can only shout in this time. I've been through my exodus. I've been through my grief. I've been through my desert. I've been through my death valley. Like I've been through. But then I've also seen where God allowed the rain to come on my life and allow me to blossom five years later. Allow me to bloom 20 years later. Allow me to blossom from one day to the next. And so everybody is seeing that blossom and they're wondering, man, what happened? Well, there ha I had to be prepared. There had to be a perfect condition. There had to be perfect storm. And I had to be prepared for that. I had to be prepared to ride the storm. Because if he sends a storm that you're, that you're not prepared for, you're going to be devoured. You're not going to make it. Therefore, you're not going to be this effective and efficient, efficient life. And in most deserts and wilderness, there's going to be a level of control that we are going to have to give up because at some point you're going to have to stop fighting like imagine trying to fight against your body but also fight against a a environment or a situation where fighting it is actually more dangerous than not fighting it like this is one of the like we to me we're in that season where we are not going to beat this by ourselves we're not going to beat it through fighting we're not going to beat injustice through fighting. We're not going to beat this racism through fighting. We're not going to beat COVID through fighting. Like we, because we are, we are either physically fighting our bodies or we're fighting each other. But yeah, we're also fighting in a very, what is already a volatile situation. The fighting needs to stop. So eventually we're going to have to give up complete control and say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Give him back the reins. Give him full control. Allow him to be the author and the finisher. Allow him to be the head and the tail. Allow him to be Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Allow him to be everything. I used to hear my dad say, Jesus is Lord all the time. And for so long when I was younger, I used to wonder why. 
and then I realized that he was declaring and proclaiming that over every part of my life, over every concern that may be going on in my head and in my heart, Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are the owner. You are in full control. I can't do it by myself. I can't make it rain. I can't provide water. But you are the oasis. You will be the oasis in my desert that will allow me to go from one level to another so that I can rejoice and so that even in my desert moment I can be glad even in my desert moment I can find joy even in my desert moment I can find peace so in this time of hard times ladies especially I want to encourage you allow yourself to go through don't get stuck allow yourself to go through don't get bogged down by the pressures of anyone be okay with saying I can't do this by myself and I certainly cannot do it by man's own hands. It has to be me depending on God. It has to be me not being consumed by the heat or by the cold or it has to be me not going by what I see that's not there, that's not present, but allowing me to, re to recognize that everything I need from day to day, he's going to provide. Every thought I need from day to day, he's going to provide. Every strength. I need from day to day he's gonna provide I'm gonna get through this and when I get through this I'm gonna be, be able to help the other woman I'm gonna be able to help my fellow sister I'm gonna be able to be a greater mother and wife for my children for my husband therefore a greater leader in the community but I'm gonna go through this and then for many of us who have gone through ours now is the time for us to be able to effectively and efficiently speak up and help someone else. I can help and I can encourage and I can smile because I remember going through a level, a, a season of wilderness that was the worst. That was the worst. There was moment, I'm surprised that I can actually say this and not cry because there used to be a moment two, three years after the accident where I couldn't even think about it without crying. But now, I don't know that it hasn't gotten easier, but it's gotten better to manage. So I'm able to talk about it and I'm able to use that to be able to bring hope to someone else who may be in that level, that, that state of the desert. And it's a season. You will not be in that season for a long time. You will not be in that season. That season is going to change, but you got to be ready because when that season change, there's going to be a level of rain that he's going to bring. There's going to be a season of blossom that you're going to be able to enjoy, but taking, not, not being able to change your level of thinking from the anger and the hurt and the pain so that when that season finished, then there is now blossom and there is now beauty and there is now peace. You want to be able to enjoy that. You want to be able to share that extra weight. You want to be able to share that extra grief and share that depression and share that anxiety and share that fight to be able to enjoy the provisions, to be able to enjoy the benefits and the advantages and the opportunities that he's bringing your way. Because why? He is a God of righteousness. And he said, seek ye first my kingdom. And everything you need, everything you need, I will provide for you. And so, I, if nothing else, ladies, I pray that God gives you the strength, the tenacity to be able to go through your season of wilderness so that you can come out and effectively help, effectively help and efficiently help the next generation, efficiently help another woman to be able to just be stronger so that your life alone as you live it is a living testimony to change a life, is a living testimony and a witness to bring someone else to Christ, to bring someone else to hope, to bring someone else to that living water that God has, that Jesus is, that no one else can provide. So I encourage you to, even in your love, this season of the death value, of death valley, speak life. In this season of, of your wilderness, speak life. In this season of dryness, in this season of loss of control, in this season of the desert, speak life into yourself, speak life into your situation, speak life into the world. 
And most of all, speak life into something else, into someone else, into some other woman. Speak life. Speak life. I pray that each and every one of you will come out on top and each and every one of you will come out of this and come through this so much stronger than you were when you were going in. These seasons are not here to stay. These seasons will come and these seasons will go. For every, To everything there is a season, to every purpose there is a time. Father, we ask that there will be nothing else but your will be done in our lives, in this world, in the name of Jesus. God, for every woman listening at the sound of my voice, Father God, I ask that you will perfect every concern. You will make sure that they, are, they get the perfect conditions, Father, and the perfect storm so that they can grow and so that they can be so much greater and better than they ever were in you, depending on no one else but you right now in the name of Jesus. I encourage that you will be their pillar of strength. Father God, you will be their peace. You will be their joy, their laughter, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are our God. Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Stay safe. Stay safe.